So welcome everybody. We are here to talk about the alternative winter break. COVID gives us an excuse to create a really fun new program. I am Kaylee Lytle. I am a 2L here, RWU. I'm originally from Colorado. Uh, just so you know, I became a coordinator for ASB because I had so much fun last year. I went to Detroit, we'll talk about that later, but um, I just had such an enjoyable experience and I wanted to make sure that I was able to help have other people have great experiences, which is why this year is particularly exciting because it's new for everybody. Um, Ryan Coyne is the other student coordinator. You can go ahead and chat. Yeah, hi everybody. My name's Ryan. Uh, I am originally from Winchester, Virginia. Um, Let's see. Oh, something I like about Rhode Island. You forgot that little icebreaker, Kaylee. <laughs> but something I love about Rhode Island coming from uh, Virginia with the long roads and highways is that everything's so close here. Um, so now my, my long drive is like 30 minutes and I, I'm like that's forever. So I, I like that part of Rhode Island. <laughs> um, but I became an ASB coordinator, like much like Kaylee, that I had such a great experience at the Brooklyn Defenders. And I saw just how passionate that Ivan and Natalie were about being coordinators last year, and they just seemed to love it so much. So I was like, well, I have to apply for that. So, uh, so far it's been just like they said, it was amazing as well. And I'm really excited to turn us in this winter break direction for this, for this year. Yeah. And um, Ryan and I work with the lovely ladies in the Feinstein Center, um, Lori, Susie, and Lisa, um, if you guys want to go ahead and say hi right now, just to introduce yourselves, that'd be awesome. So I'm Lori Barron. I work in the Feinstein Center. I love Alternative Spring Break. Alternative Spring Break has been go growing by leaps and bounds, and we get so much pleasure out of finding new places to send you and hearing you tell us what you learn. It's like the, the most fun thing that we do. And I'm Susie Harrington Stepp, and I'm the Associate Director of Pro Bono Programs. I've met many of you um, in person, if you're 2Ls and 3Ls or 1Ls through Zoom. Uh, I work on this project. I also am your point person for all things related to the pro bono graduation requirement. So like, how do you actually certify your hours, all of that stuff. So uh, if you ever have questions about how your pro bono hours work with this program or any pro bono programming, I'm your person, Feinstein. Hi, I'm Lisa Quinn. I'm the program coordinator. I work with um, Lori and Eliza and Susie in the Feinstein Center, and I'm here um, helping Kaylee and Ryan create, you know, help pull this program together. Um, and I'm here for anything Feinstein Center related. So um, looking forward to working with you all on ASB. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, before we really get started, I just wanted to remind you that if you do have any questions, we would love to answer them. Please just write them into that little chat box. We're going to do a question wrap up at the very end. That way we can keep this short and sweet and simple for all of you. So alternative winter break this year. It's usually known as alternative spring break. Um, this is your way to spend some time over winter break working in the public interest arena. Um, RWU sets up the placements, you get assigned, and then throughout the week you get to do super cool stuff with a team of lawyers. Um, this year it's going to be mostly remote. There are a few possible exceptions. Those are still some details that we're working out behind the scenes. Um, and this year, it, it's going to be the January 19th through 22nd. While we're working through this, too, it's just really good to note that everything with that week will depend on what the COVID guidelines are during that time. I know that you've heard this a million times over, but there's just so many things that we don't know. So we're trying to do everything that we can to make this um, really smooth process for you. But it'll kind of just depend on what has to happen the week before. So uh, a little history about ASB. Um, it started in 2005 as a way to assist uh, the, the, the destruction of Hurricane Katrina. Um, since then, it has grown to a national level and been successful to match students 
with uh, local and national projects during that spring breaks, winter break for us this year. Um, specifically in our law school, it focuses on many different types of law and uh, places that uh, often where clients lack adequate representation. So uh, it will be places like nonprofit organizations, public defense offices, legal aids, places where the representation is uh, vastly needed. So that is the focus of the spring break program here. And uh, like uh, Kaylee mentioned, it will look a little different this year just because of the uh, what's going on in the world right now. Um, so we are still committed to you know creating such a, a great experience for everybody, but uh, just, yeah, it, it will be a little bit more remote <laughs> natured. So uh, why uh, Alternative Spring Break is right for you. You can see all these uh, gr uh, great uh, little uh, tidbits on, on the screen here. So it's a great hands-on experience. It's a way to uh, look at new areas of the law. So you may think that you wanna go into something like criminal. I know that was my focus last year. I was like, I wanna be a criminal defense attorney. Um, I still have that ambition, but um, after seeing the many, where my placement was, the many different types of law that there is and that practitioners work in, it really expands your, your brain and mind to the, the possibilities that there are. So this is just a really um, good opportunity for you to see just how many, how many fields you can go into. Uh, I will point out in addition, if you do go into something that you don't like, you now know that you don't like that. So, so it, it still is very productive to uh, experience just different types of law that you may not have considered before. In addition, it's a resume builder. You can put this on your resume and it will show employers that you have been out in the uh, working with a law firm and know what you're doing, um, as well as no deposit this year. So because things are will be in a remote nature, uh, there will not be a deposit. Normally under the uh, circumstances, there is a deposit to pay uh, in order to participate. But this year there is none, it is being waived. So these are some of the placements from last year that have committed already to alternative winter break this year. Um, on there is the Sugar Law Center for Economic and Social Justice, which is the placement that I went to. I originally grew up in the Detroit area, so that was extremely amazing to go back and, and give back to my community. But like Ryan said, it was a great uh, way for me to know that I did not want to work in labor and employment law, um, but I still got so much out of that week. And I have such great memories from learning about unions in Detroit and how this organization helps those who really just need legal help in any way that they can. Um, I know that Ryan went to the Brooklyn Defenders, which is pretty similar to the Bronx Defender Services. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really exciting to see that all of these placements still want students to come and help. Um, additionally, we have some new placements this year that the ladies have been working extremely hard on finding, um, which includes a couple of different areas in Texas and Delaware. Um, the great thing, well, the silver lining, I guess, really, is that we can go more nationally with this program this year because we are remote. So that's something that I'm really excited about to hear what students thought when they went to these new places. Um, yeah. Uh, so, do, you guys, do you ladies want to uh, talk about any of the new placements or any details? Sure. I mean, I can just mention we're, we're you know, obviously we're looking and we're getting a lot of positive responses from alums who we haven't worked with in the past because maybe they couldn't host a student physically, but are very much interested in integrating you remotely. But um, Professor Diamond, who's speaking, who's now teaching uh, the American uh, Indian law class, has, um, we've been talking to him about doing a sort of a trial court specific alternative winter break program. Uh, Lori can talk about some of our alums, uh, like the Federal Defender in Texas, but we're like literally every day <laughs> emailing new uh, potential placements. Um, so we're really excited because we think we're gonna have some really interesting new placements, a lot more new placements probably than last year. So Lori, do you wanna talk about yours? Yeah, and I wanna take full responsibility for that typo in coalition down there. That's how fast we're working, okay? This morning I got an email from the Capital Area Immigrants Rights Coalition, Col <laughs> as I spelled it, 
Um, and uh, I had a student work with them last spring on a, just a random project and they're excited. We have two alums at Pine Tree Legal Assistance in Portland, Maine, um, and they're super excited to work with us. Um, reached out to um, an alum who is a federal defender in Texas and he wrote back. The, the great thing is most people are working from home so they're right back immediately. Yes, we can use, uh, yes, we can use the help and, um, and we'll come up with something good and what do you think your students would like? And so people are talking about, you know, we'll come up with a research project, we'll try to include them in uh, Zoom meetings, we'll try to get them to sit in on a client interview. Um, so lots of creativity and then um, an, old, an older placement, a uh, federal defender in Delaware with one of our alums, Aiken Adepoju, was out of the rotation last year because he was too busy and this year he wrote back, I'll do anything for RWU and your students and don't want to leave anybody stranded. So I'd like one, but if you need me to take three, I'll take three. So um, people are emailing right back and we've got lots of, lots of asks out there. We're super excited. And I'm going to fix that slide before uh, the next time we use it. <laughs> awesome. So Ryan, you want to talk a little bit about what it might look like this year? Yes. So uh, I'm sure you guys are itching to know what it will look like since we've mentioned how different it will be from the beginning of these slides. Uh, <laughs> so from the places we've reached out to and uh, collabed with, um, you know, we've gotten different feedback from the, all, um, the, all the sites. But, you know, for example, some of the things that you might be doing is working on a research assignment, um, either, you know, individually or in a group if you are at a site with multiple other um, students. Um, so like I said, you, each site's different. Some will want to accept one, some will accept, you know, multiple, a couple of students to come and uh, work with them for the week. So that, that might depend. Uh, there'll be Q and A's with attorneys uh, that you can, for lunches, for just, you know, times when you can ask them questions about uh, their field of law, their daily life, what they do outside of work, how, what their hours are like. So there'll be a lot of opportunities just to ask those types of questions, uh, as well as sitting on like client calls and meetings. Um, and you know they, the attorneys are adjusting to life just like we are right now. So getting a sense for what they're doing in times like these will be just as important. They'll be doing client calls over Zoom, over uh, different softwares and programs. So you'll be able to see how they have adjusted to, to life uh, within the pandemic uh, as well. So this is a completely new experience. It will probably not look like your typical internship if that's what you were expecting, but Placements have been just, as uh, Lori mentioned, so incredibly excited to adjust and host with us this year um, and create an experience that you will come out of with a positive attitude and feel more ready to go into the field after you graduate. And this year, um, things are going to be a little bit different as far as how placements are selected as well. It's just the theme. Um, the first big change is that we're going to be utilizing a lottery system and we heard the reservations that were expressed in that survey. Um, our goal here is to make this process as stress free as possible, not only for you guys, but also, you know, for us, um, we're trying to be fair. We want to be inclusive. We're also trying to just be mindful of the collective stress levels that the entire RW community is feeling too. Um, so we, we don't think that there will be enough spots for everyone. Um, so some of the things that we're going to be considering is whether you've done ASB in the past, how many hours do you need, how many placements are available, the numbers of spots in the placements. And we're also not requiring the usual essay that we have in the past. And we're not weighing the quality of your resume or how in the um, please at the end ask any questions that you have and we'll try to answer them. We want to make sure that we're able to give you as much information as possible um, and just also knowing that we're kind of trying to be flexible with all of this as well. Kayla, you froze a little bit at least for me. Will you just repeat sort of the resume piece because it's important that students know that their experience doesn't matter or I guess I'm saying it for you. Your experience doesn't matter but the quality of your resume is going to be looked at. Okay, so no one should feel like, wait, I have no criminal defense experience. They're not going to pick me. No, but you all definitely need to get your resume in shape. That's really important, just in case anyone missed that. Yes, and we will talk more about 
that as well, um, which brings us to this slide, how to apply to participate. Um, so your resume is a part of the, uh, the application process. Um, we do recommend that if you need some help, chat with the career development. I know that they've got an, like an open day coming up soon just to check your resumes and um, everybody in that office is so helpful and kind. Sorry, that was my animal. Um, but the exciting thing is that uh, the alternative winter break, um, sorry, application is going live on Wednesday, November 25th. So we know this is right during the Thanksgiving break, but our hope is that when everybody is able to kind of take a step back and have some breathing space, this will be a very quick, easy way to apply just your resume and then this application. Um, we're also gonna send out an email in advance so that you have the placement descriptions because you will be ranking your placements when you apply. Um, and we'll also include all of the instructions. And Ryan and I are planning on hosting a Zoom um, hangout session, I suppose, during that week. So that way, if you do have any questions, please ask us. Um, we'll give you our emails. We'll make sure that Ryan and I are very available to talk. Um, and we wanna make sure that this is, yeah, as easy a process as possible for you. Yeah, we were thinking of doing something on like Friday or Saturday, a Zoom setup, but like Kaylee said, our emails, um, I mean, if you need it, I'm more than happy to give it to you, um, but I think they were in the administrative announcement email. So please just like reach out anytime you have any questions, I'm happy to answer, really. It's not a bother. No, <laughs> this is the fun part of law school for us. Yeah, it's a distraction. <laughs> there we go. Um, so the other thing to note is that Monday, November 30th at 5 p.m. is when those applications are due. So that's almost a week. Um, we're trying to make sure that we are able to notify you by Friday, December 4th, um, which is why the applications are due earlier that week. So it's just really important to note that this is right in that little reading time that we get. Um, there is a chance that we may need to communicate with you and contact you during this week. So please make sure in the application you include a, like a, the best way to get a hold of you. That'll be listed on there. That's just a, a, just a little reminder. Mm -hmm. uh, and then so just a few more dates to remember. Uh, there will be a mandatory pre-trip orientation session uh, in January. We haven't quite scheduled the date on that just yet because we want to uh, just figure out the iron out the details a little bit more so that we give everybody an opportunity to be able to attend. It will likely be in the evening. It will most definitely be through Zoom. Uh, it'll go for about two hours where I really uh, Kaylee and I will just, uh, as well as Lisa Laurie and uh, Susie will tell you about the expectations, what it, your week will look like, um, just some you know, uh, decorum and, and things to do and to remember to do when you're at, at your placements that week. Uh, so just be on the lookout for that. We will give you plenty of time in advance to schedule that date so that you have that in your calendars. Uh, in addition, we'll be doing a post-trip debrief uh, and we scheduled that for February 27th. Uh, at January, right now. <laughs> January, okay, that's my bad, January 27th. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is kind of far out. I was like, yeah, I might have missed that, but it'll be January 27th. Um, so we'll fix that and make sure that you guys have that proper date. That's my bad. Um, but basically in this debrief, we just uh, go around and talk about the different placements that everyone went to and your experience and what you did and just basically try to uh, get everyone onto the same page of, of the great work that you did around the state and or possibly around the country, wherever you are. This is our group from last year. Um, we will take a group photo via Zoom during our mandatory orientation. And what a, a great um, new thing to talk about during next year's ASB. Um, and then as far as what happens next, um, definitely get your resume ready. Again, career development. I'm sure that they've all been very helpful so far, but I highly recommend them fill out that application as soon as it goes live, we will send you a reminder email um, and then really just get ready for a super cool week. We, we know that it's gonna be fun and we know that it's gonna be engaging. We just don't know exactly what that looks like, but that's what I'm most excited for. I can't wait to hear what you get to do during this week. 
Um, and then finally, this is our emails again, Kaylee, Ryan, we are here for any kind of questions. Um, we're very passionate about alternative spring winter break. And I did just love so much for everybody to be able to experience this. So please definitely ask us questions. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Yeah. And Kaylee, I just wanted to say one other thing that I forgot to say on like, you know, trying to put a plug for, for why this is, was such a, a good experience for me. I didn't have any legal experience prior to law school. I'm sure much like most of you might've had, I mean, I worked in a high school. I helped kids go to college. <laughs> so uh, really not related to the law at all. And I was very nervous coming into law school about my experience and what, and what I would have to offer and what it would look like to be in a law firm. So, and it was, it was just in the back of my mind the whole time. So you know, when I heard about ASB, I immediately jumped on the opportunity to apply and participate. And I couldn't be more grateful that I did. And, you know, it was, it was just one day after the next in, uh, in Brooklyn was a, a new, a new thing that I learned, a new thing that I saw, but really my favorite part was just seeing these people in the field do not only like exceptional work for that's needed, but just like being happy moods, just living life a little bit and, and talking about the law. It was, yeah, it was just like, it was great to see. So that's just my last little plug I wanted to throw in that I forgot about. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that having the experience of getting to know lawyers was one of the coolest part. I don't have lawyers in my family. I didn't know any lawyers. So going to an office and like, I've also never, I don't know what a lawyer does. So it was great to see what different kinds of lawyers do every day. Uh, that was that was the real drive for me for for why my why I chose ASB. So sorry about that cat in the background. Um, I do see a couple of questions. So um, the first one, how many spots are there and how many students do you see applying? Um, that's a great question, Sam. I unfortunately don't have a full number yet because we are still working with a lot of these placements to make sure or to like follow up and see how many students they can take. Um, if Lori or Susie or Lisa wants to hop in here. I can, I can try this. Um, so we had over 110 people fill out the survey expressing interest, which is way more than we've ever had. So we think there are a lot of people craving um, experience and connection. And last year was a weird year because COVID hit right in the middle. Typically, we've never, even with all our travel trips, I don't think we've ever um, had more than um, 60 slots because it becomes kind of unmanageable um, administratively. Um, and this year, many of our placements are saying that they, they really can only accommodate one to two students. It's really different when we can send like five to, to the Brooklyn Defenders and they're gonna follow five different lawyers around. So we really don't know. Um, I would guess that we're gonna have somewhere around 50, 60 slots, but we also don't know um, how many people will actually apply. So when you're th thinking about this and we don't wanna set up expectations so that, you know, 110 people, you know, we, we, wanna, we wanna be transparent about what we think might happen, but we really don't know how you all are gonna feel after exams. So this is, you know, right now we have classes aren't starting until January 25th. Um, so on the one hand, we've often had people who feel like spring break is just too tight. They don't want to do it. They'd rather focus on their classes with a week break. Now this is this is the week before you start in January. We don't know what the COVID situation will be. We assume there may be more interest now than there actually will be when people, if people go home somewhere outside of you know, Rhode Island, some people already are home. You know, we want to accommodate our remote students. We want to build connection for our 1Ls who aren't, um, who aren't here. So we just don't know, right? We're trying to ask you to predict what you're going to want to do the week of, of <laughs> January 18th. And recognizing that that week is MLK's birthday, is a holiday that Monday. So it's literally four days. Um, and we think the trips may be more appealing because you won't be able to get your 50 hours in through ASB this year. It's, there's no way you can get 50 hours in in four days. And some placements may be more like 20 to 30. So we really don't know how many of you will actually apply. And we really don't know how many placements we'll end up with. 
So we've had, once we realized that the schedule um, was being pushed back and we didn't have spring break, we madly started emailing all our connections to try to get placements. Um, and I'd say right now, um, we maybe have 25, uh, 25 placements um, or 25 slots. I don't actually, I don't know. Lisa, Susie, you might know better than I how many yeses we've got. I really haven't looked, I didn't look at the spreadsheet this morning, I'm sorry. But all that to say, we're really trying to find the right balance and we want enough people to apply. So if people do drop out, we can slot people in on the wait list but we don't want a huge wait list so that people are really disappointed. So we're, we wanna be all things to all people and we're not really sure how to do that. And we're, we welcome your suggestions as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Any suggestions that any of you have? We are, we ourselves are being flexible. We're trying to make sure that we're accommodating everyone. And um, I know that like sometimes hearing I don't know is not helpful during law school, but there are some things that we just don't know. Uh, my goal is to be as upfront about it as possible because that's what I appreciate. Um, and then Emily, I do see your question here about that lottery system taking into account the three L's who weren't able to participate their one L year. And then with the scheduling last year of PR and the MPRE. Um, this is something that we have discussed. I I can't fully remember what we talked about, um, but, but the, the lottery, on the application, it will include things like how many hours do you need? Have you participated in ASB before and, and your year? Um, so those things will be in front of us. We will know about those things. I don't know exactly how much it will weigh in that lottery. I don't myself, but um, those are all things that we have put on the application with the intention of like keeping ahead in our brains. I just can chime in. I think that's right, Kaylee. And just so everyone understands, we literally switched gears on this program like less than three weeks, three weeks ago, including like changing the entire application procedure. So bear with us. Like we're again, we're trying to be fair and we're also trying to reduce the amount of stress or and competition. Like we don't want you to feel like you're competing against each other for these spots. But I think the MPRE is a really good point, and we'll probably ask several questions, like Kaylee said, in the application. So we can sort of gauge these different issues. And then depending on the pool, we, we may have to shift. And we'll we'll try to be really transparent. But again, we're literally trying to, our entire timeline for this program has been ramped up. So just, just understand that uh, we're trying to take these things into account. And if anyone has any other things that they think should be taken into account, just shoot us an email. Like this is the time. We'd love to hear it. The survey was really helpful, but we're totally open to trying to make this as fair as possible. But we clearly aren't going to make everyone happy about every aspect of the program. And I'll just say uh, in response to Alexis's question um, in the chat, I think we will ask you to tell us if you're able to go in person in case we have any local in-person placements. Obviously, we're not doing any travel trips this year. Um, so, um, um, and I think in terms of prioritizing, you know, I think what we can say is people who have already done ASB before and have all their hours will, will not get top priority. Um, and, um, and we're really trying to make it fair so that people who have no experience have as great a chance of getting a position as people who have tons of experience. We're trying to, we really want this to be a program that works for everybody. And so we want you to have beautiful resumes that are that are neat and clean and no typos, but we're not uh, judging at all based on what you did before you came to law school or what you did last summer. Um, what we want. And I also, to, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say for Alexis, the application will be very clear. We already know that at least one placement only wants students if it's safe to come in person. So when you're ranking, it will be very clear if that organization is only in person, only remote, remote, or they're open to either. So you'll be able to rank based on what you want to do. It'll be really clear next to the name, just like the location was essential for people last year. Not everyone wanted to go to California or Texas. When you look at the name of the organization, it'll clearly state whether it's all remote, your choice, or in person. And I only think we will have a few that are even willing to do in person because everything's so up in the air in terms of what January is going to look like. 
And the other thing I do just want to make sure that you guys know is that we will be sending you descriptions of these placements. Um, they may not be, they may not include exactly everything that you'll do that week, but um, we'll make sure that you know, obviously, again, whether they're remote or not, um, what they do in the firm and, and sort of a little bit of history about them. That way, when you are ranking them, you will know a little bit more. Uh, and again, we're all here to help answer your questions. We really just want this to be an easy process. We, we want people to have a great experience and um, however that we can help make that happen, we're here to, to listen to that. Um, um, I don't think- I wanna just add something about the process. So we, we are really trying to take control and let you have some certainty about where, what placement you're going to um, and what the plan is. And so in that vein, um, we want to have, we want to figure out who has placements before you start finals. So we will get all your applications, I think at the end of the day on the Monday after Thanksgiving. That Tuesday, um, we will be trying to slot everybody in based on a lottery. And it may be that you are high up in the lottery, but all of your five slots are gone already. So on the application, we're gonna ask you for the best way to contact you. And we don't wanna bother you during your reading period, but we may need to call you or text you and say, hey, your top five are, are full, what's your next choice? Um, so that we can slot you in. Because if we let people, if we don't want this to drag on. So our, our deadlines may seem um, rigid in the application. We're gonna to wanna to know quickly whether you want your slot or you don't so that everybody knows what's happening before you head into finals and then you don't even need to think about us um, um, until after finals. <laughs> we want you to think about us. But so the dates will be the month, the, the application will go live on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, which is November 25th. And the application is due, I think, by the end of the day on the Monday after Thanksgiving, which is November 30th. And then we will be making decisions like Tuesday and Wednesday of that week. Um, and we will endeavor to let everybody know everything by Friday. So we'll be slotting people in, calling people if we can't give you your um, first choice or fifth choice. <laughs> and we hope you'll pick up your phone and talk to us for like three minutes and then go back to your studying. But do not tell your professors that we're bothering you during reading week because they will not like that. Ryan, do you have anything to add? Uh I don't think so. I think you you nailed it. We like you said, just trying to be transparent and, and really help you out in the process. And that's why we we do want to help you by having a Zoom set up over Thanksgiving mm -hmm. uh, and talking about the application, your concerns about moving forward, or just school. <laughs> Honestly, anything you want to ask us, we're we're open to answering about it. And uh, like I said before, we'll make our emails available again. And I'll just add, if any of our students are other places, I already got a private chat message from somebody who thinks they might have a public defender office for us in Florida. If you know anyone, you have an idea, you can think of an office, um, send, uh, send us an email. It can go to Kaylee and Ryan. It can go to uh, Susie, Lisa, me, and just one of us like, hey, try this office, or I have a friend here, try this. Because the fun of this year is we don't have to pay for plane tickets anywhere, so the sky's the limit. Um, usually we are really constricted by our budget um, and spring break. So that's the beauty of this year. So help us get creative and find, you know, if there's some place you've always wanted to work in Alaska, send us the info um, or anywhere. Awesome. I think that we can end it here. Um, we're going to hang out for a little bit if you have questions that you wanted to ask us personally feel free to. Thank you so much for taking time and coming to listen about alternative winter break. We're very excited for this program. I know it's different, but we're all we're all pretty pumped. Our meetings are are very exciting. So we can't wait to share it with you guys. And um, we'll send an email out soon again to recap this and, and keep you posted on the dates and um, give you more information about the placements when they come in. So thanks so much for coming in, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank Hope you. Guys. Have a great day too. Yeah. Great day, great week, great month. We're finishing strong. We're almost there. We can do it. Well, the month's only like three more days, but great month. Have a great month. <laughs>
month. Oh my God. What happened to October? We can't talk about that. 